Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be capturing my first mosaic image using my EvoStar ATED Pro and my ASI Air Plus. So uh, stay tuned and let's see what we get. This feels like it's like never ending rain. Um, you probably feel exactly the same as well it's even raining whilst i uh, edit this video but uh, yep finally got some clear skies and an opportunity to do some imaging so my image this evening is going to be of the california nebula uh, this target is obviously quite quite big and um, i could use a smaller scope i could use my um, canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens um, and maybe capture it that way, but uh, I thought why make things uh, easy for yourself when you can make it more difficult and learn something new. So uh, the plan is to uh, use my 600mm refractor telescope and uh, basically create a mosaic image of the nebula. Uh, it's going to be quite a big project I think because uh, I'm going to be shooting this uh, using narrowband filters um, and I've not I've only got a few hours um, of clear skies tonight. It's uh, looking like it's clear for a bit and then it's going to cloud over a bit. Um, so the plan is to uh, yeah, start off imaging in HA and then hopefully I can move on to O3 and S2 on another, other night. So to start off with, um, I need to actually plan that image itself and I'm going to go over to uh, Telescopius, I think it's called. Um, which is a uh, website uh, where you can basically punch in all of your um, details, your camera, your telescope, um, pick a target and then it will uh, help you do that mosaic planning and then uh, move that over into the ASI Air Plus device. So in order to do the mosaic planning itself I could uh, use something like Stellarium and um, manually do all of that and work out the exact RA and declination um, coordinates or basically I could uh, use this tool here so um, if you go to telescopius or telescopius.com I'm not sure how you pronounce it um, it's, there's just a, a ton of useful stuff in here but uh, what we're going to do is um, click on targets then deep sky and it, it sort of provides you with some really nice uh, targets for, for the evening based on your sort of location and things and you can see how high they are in the sky as well uh, so if we just sort of scroll down until we get to the California Nebula, tap that and it will open it up and you can see some um, amazing images of uh, other people that have uploaded their uh, photographs there. So you have in this uh, part of the screen here um, sort of a, a possible view. So you can see I've already done a bit of a blue peter here and uh, prepared something uh, earlier. Um, but with this tool you can go in, you can enter all of your, um, all of your equipment uh, focal lengths, um, apertures and all of those sorts of things, whether you've got uh, coma correctors, reducers and all of those um, pieces of additional equipment. Um, you can enter your uh, camera details as well, including the sensor size and the resolution and then that will calculate what your actual field of view is. And then uh, the magic is done in this uh, third button here. So this, um, this here uh, if it works, there you go, opens up the mosaic settings and you can specify how big a grid you want. Um, you can specify the overlap as well and you need to make sure there is an overlap for when you're actually processing it afterwards. And um, it then sort of provides you with the, um, the different panes and the RA and declination uh, coordinates. So uh, what we can do here is just sort of move this around until uh, based on this image we look like we're happy with um, how this will look. One tip as well will be to make sure that you don't have any stars um, in that overlapping area because um, apparently when you come to merge these um, in, in stacking and when if you're using dithering as well, um, you could get some strange artifacts. So try and keep sort of bright stars um, away from those overlapping regions. So all we need to do then um, is sort of copy this uh, CSV that's copied into the clipboard um, and we can then either sort of uh, store that in sort of notes or a text file um, but actually what we're going to do is transfer this into the um, ASI Air Plus device um, so it's all ready for an imaging plan. So first things first open up the ASI Air app and then go over to plan and then the burger menu on the right hand side. We've then got a little box with an arrow going into it 
tap that and then copy and paste or paste your import plan into uh, that text field and then you get this screen it looks like it's not worked you have to hit the plus button then uh, select what you actually want to image so i've got um, mono camera and filters so i'm just going to do h alpha um, and select a number of uh, number of images for this particular sequence once you've got that um, you're essentially ready to go and then you tap the left arrow in the top left hand corner and that creates the uh, plan so you just tap apply to apply the sequence and there it is if you then tap the uh, individual pane uh, you see it's selected and you can then move those backwards and forwards or actually hit detail to go into uh, make any further setting changes if you want um, and here I just decided to uh, rename the target so it was a bit more meaningful than just pain one pain two um, so yeah just went through and did that with the rest of them then as with any other plan uh, you can just hit the burger menu in the top right hand corner and you can see the different settings there whether you want to start guiding meridian flips and then what you do at the end of the imaging session as well so i've got those set up to uh, start guiding auto meridian flip and turn off the cooler and go to the home position at the end of the session. Aligned now, everything's all in focus, and um, I just thought I'd uh, slew the telescope over to uh, M31 just to get a few uh, subs on that uh, for another project. However, uh, typically the clouds are rolled in, um, so I'm going to wait around till I think about 10 o'clock. I think it's going to clear then, um, and then hopefully as well the uh, California Nebula. nebula. <laughs> I'm really struggling to say that at the moment. Um, the California Nebula should have uh, cleared the trees and I can start the mosaic plan. So uh, I'm just going to sit tight for a bit and hopefully the skies will clear. So the, uh, the cloud finally cleared um, as, as predicted by the forecast so uh, that's a bit of a first. Um, yeah basically the, uh, the cloud cleared. I then um, kicked off the imaging plan. It slewed straight to the, uh, the first um, phase of the the, the mosaic um, took the first image and then I realised actually the rotation of the camera wasn't quite um, the right way it was basically 90 degrees out um, so I just uh, rotated the camera um, and then kicked off the plan again and it looks like it's um, working okay so uh, just going to keep an eye on it and um, basically should just carry on working how it should do so um, it's just a standard image plan apart from it's going to be um, Slewing to different parts of the uh, California Nebula, um, but um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it to it now. Uh, if it needs to do a meridian flip later on, it's just programmed to do that automatically, so I don't need to worry about that either. Um, and also, the electronic focuser will um, will refocus um, if the temperature drops or if it needs to, but uh, shouldn't really need to this evening. Uh, I think it's about the same temperature all the way through the night. Uh, so I think that's probably it. I'm going to leave it imaging and uh, see what happens tomorrow morning.